Hi everyone, this is Cody, and in today's video we are going to be installing this iPod interface into my 2006 ML500. Now this is going to allow me to use my iPod and use it much more easily with the command system. Now this will apply to any 2006 to 2010 ML, the W164 generation. So all you're going to need is this uh, adapter right here. We probably will need to add a hole inside the glove box. Uh, now my drawer doesn't stay closed, so the first step, open up your ashtray. Now there should be two torque screws, might have been replaced with Phillips, but they are right down in the corner there. And there's one on each side of the ashtray, remove them, and then we can pull out the ashtray. So once you have the tray out, go ahead and disconnect this electrical wire. This is what powers the outlet, the cigarette outlet on it, as well as the light inside of the ashtray. Next, you're going to make sure that drawer is closed or in my case hold it in there and pull out on this you got to be careful not to break it you can also use a pry tool and pry from the edges you also you want to be careful not to scratch or crack any of this so i find it's easier to just pull it out from that point the easiest way to get this out of here uh, i struggled a little bit i kept pulling on it trying to get it out you actually want to push the whole thing up and then pull it out other than that it will be quite difficult to get out of there now this has a whole bunch of wires on it. So we want to go ahead and disconnect all of those wires. Okay, so now that that is out, we have two Torx T20 screws that hold in the radio. So go ahead and remove them. There's one on each side. Now that we've got the screws out, if you can see these little tabs on here that they were screwed into, go ahead and pull them down. Might be a little bit difficult. Do both of them and then the radio should slide out. So now that both of those are disconnected, I'm just gonna reach back in here, and kind of push the radio from behind, just like that, and it comes out. So now we're just gonna disconnect what's on the back. So now that we have the radio out, it isn't actually necessary to remove everything. So what I'm going to do at this point is test it. So we're going to unplug this big plug on the back of the radio here, and then plug this into the radio and then our plug will be plugged into this. And then obviously our iPod goes into this side here. Now if it works, we will continue with the installation. The Mercedes logo is showing up on the iPod and we do have iPod control from here. The only problem is the adapter I've got doesn't actually have fiber optic. So that means there's absolutely no sound right now. So we're going to have to do a little modification. So looking in here, here's the adapter. You can see on the right bottom corner, there's two fiber optic cables. Now those need to connect up through this adapter. Now unfortunately, if we look at our adapter, I guess it would be oriented, um, that's what that plugs into. So you have to imagine it in the reverse, it doesn't have any there. But if we look at the other side, it has the slots for them. So what I'm thinking is we can actually take those wires out of there and stick them in those two holes there and we'll be good to go. Okay, so the way where you're going to do this, if you can see this little tab here, we actually want to pull up on this piece of it right here, and then we will be able to slide out those fiber optic cables. Once you have them out, they should look something like that, and now we're just going to slide them right back into the slot over here. Now one more time, just to be sure this is all going to work, I'm going to test this once more, make sure all the sound works and everything. And if it does, we'll put it all together. Now that I've verified everything does work, I'm going to mount this somewhere back there and then we'll also have to find a way to get this wire into the glove box. Okay, now for this next step, to actually fit this cord through your glove box, you will need to drill a hole. I'm going to drill mine directly behind this auxiliary hole here, and that way I'll, I will still be able to use the aux cord if I want to play music from my phone, but if I want to use the iPod, I also can. Now, if you don't care about this port right here, you can just take it out and put this in instead. There we go, so I ended up using the half inch bit and it still wasn't big enough, the drill bit, to go through and make a big enough hole. 
So I just kind of rounded the hole out until it got big enough I could fit in the uh, that end of it and then was able to slip that into place. But in the end, it turned out good. So now we just need to put this, stick it in there somewhere, and then connect up the other end of this wire. Okay, so I ended up just sticking the box down back in there. There's a little compartment you can put it in, uh, just an open space, and then I stuffed the wires down in there. There should be enough space for everything down there. Now we can reinstall the radio. Next, go ahead and connect up the wires on the back of your uh, just center dash. Now once the wires are connected up, go ahead and push your drawer back in, put this into place, and then push it up in there. Okay, so now that you have the, the center dash section, whatever you call that, back in, go ahead and grab the wire for your ashtray, plug in your ashtray. After you plugged in your ashtray, then you can go ahead and stuff it back in the car, just like that. And don't forget to put the screws in, and after that, you're all set. After actually having this system in for a little while, I discovered a problem. The iPod, the actual output on the bottom of it, just isn't amplified enough to work well with the input on this radio. And it does sound clear through the iPod interface alone, um, but you have to turn up the volume a lot more, and it also seems to take out a lot of the bass. Um, now you can compensate for that, but just overall, it doesn't sound as good. Now it may be slightly more clear, and, and this is just my opinion, I, I prefer to have it this way. So I certainly recommend you try it that way first. You may really like it. But, if you're like me, I wanted something better. So I tried this iPod adapter by Mercedes. Now I've heard the ones that are made in Germany are better, but I couldn't get my hands on one of them. So I tried this, and it really didn't do anything. In fact, it just made it all sound worse. It was distorted, so maybe something's wrong with this. I did get it used, um, but I was done with that. So don't definitely don't waste your money on one of these, because these weren't that cheap either. Now the solution I have found, and this actually works really well, is this is the, the cord that comes from your car, plugs into the radio. So take this white cable here. Uh, now yours may have more, but pop this one out. I've already done this for the video. Now this houses your auxiliary cord. So the, the cord that you can plug into in your glove box. That's what this goes to. And then come over here on your adapter piece, the piece that will now plug into your radio. Pop out this white cord. Now this has the audio input for the auxiliary cord and the iPod. Now the radio is smart, so if you have your iPod plugged in, it won't play the audio from the auxiliary cord. But the iPod never actually turns off that output. I tried this by plugging a pair of headphones in when it was playing through the Mercedes, and it still outputs audio through there. So just leave that unplugged and now go ahead and plug in that cord from your auxiliary into the main harness that will actually plug into your radio just like this. And then now you can hook everything back up like before. Remember to hook up your um, uh, fiber optic cables as well. Now this will allow you to play your iPod with the interface or without the interface. The interface is not going to transfer any audio, uh, but it will allow you to control the iPod, and you still get the same sound as this. Now one thing to keep in mind when you actually uh, use the iPod, before you plug it into the car, you need to make sure it's in the, the fully volume up position and, and you don't have any uh, like effects or EQ settings on here. Now if you do use effects or EQ settings, they will actually work through the system now. Um, and, and if you find you prefer the volume on a lower setting and turn this up more, you can also do it that way. But for me, I turn the volume all the way up and then plug everything in and it all works great. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. Now you can play your tunes in your car.